Good morning, dear friend. I want to welcome you to the Sunday morning broadcast from the Mountain View Independent Baptist Church. It's Preacher Bobby. I want to thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I know that the temperatures are bitter and it's cold. And to uh, be quite honest with you, dear friend, I don't know how much more of this global warming we can take with uh, temperatures down in the teens and single digits. But the good Lord to get us through it no matter what happens. So we just trust in him want to say thank you to WAF radio station there and everything that they do to help make this broadcast possible for everything they do to bring the gospel to the, this county. Going to be back in Revelation chapter number 20 again and be talking about the great white throne judgment. I'm so glad that it doesn't affect us who are saved, but i just preaching this as a warning to those who are not and as an inspiration to those who are that we need to witness to the lost because we never know when the last day is going to be. And also invite you out to church. If you don't have a home church, we'd love for you to come out and be in a service with us. We're located on Myers Lane. Just go to Food Line, turn down the road between Food Line Dollar Store, and the church is straight in front of you, as most every church, uh, Sunday schools at 10 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11, and Sunday night at 6. Wednesday night worship, uh, Bible study is at 7 p.m., and our kids' collection is at 6. And we have classes for every age for Sunday school and our youth connection. So I want to invite you out to that. And Revelation chapter 20, we're going to pick up in verse number 13. And we'll uh, go ahead and have prayer before we get to reading the scripture. Heavenly Father, God, as we bow before you, thank you so much for the day that you've given to us. Lord, we pray for every need that is out there. We pray for every preacher, every pastor, every Sunday school teacher, every church. God, we pray for the leaders of our nation. God, we pray for our first responders, our police, firefighters, rescue squad. EMTs, doctors, nurses, militaries, and our family. God, we pray that this country would turn back to you. God, there's a falling away from the faith, but God, we pray for the power of God here this day. We pray, God, for every church that meets in your name. We'll be so very careful to give you the praise, the honor, the glory for it all. In Christ Jesus' precious holy name we do pray, and amen. And in Revelation 20, verse number 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. <clears throat> the sea. There are those that believe that this is a, talking about the sea is a symbolic statement. Some believe that it is accurately uh, talking about literally the seas, the bodies of waters around the world. And I know that sometimes uh, in Revelation, the Bible says, just like the beast came up out of the sea, talking about a sea of people. And the Bible talks about the sea of glass up in heaven that God looks through. And certainly that's just talking about the expanse of heaven and, uh, and it's as if made of glass. But I believe uh, myself that the Bible's talking about uh, the sea. And the reason for that being is... Uh, at the great white throne judgment, there are you'll be judged according to the works, you know, the bad works, and, and that is done in this body. And it seems like people attribute to, when they hear about death is uh, what we're accustomed to in the day that we live in, and it's those who have died and are placed in a casket and in a vault and in a grave and buried, and we go to the cemetery for the burial, and but you got to go back 6,000 years. That wasn't always the case. There are those, and the Bible does say, dust thou art, dust thou shalt return. And we understand that this body is made from the dust of the earth. God tells us that in Genesis. He breathed the breath, he uh, gathered dust up and formed a man from the dust of the earth. Then he breathed the breath of life, may have became a living soul. <clears throat> But it seems like there are millions, maybe so many more millions of people who aren't in marked grace. They're before embalming and before there were 
uh, caskets and vaults and all that stuff. Uh, people were buried, and, you know, they, the body just uh, goes back to the dust, not preserved like they are accustomed to now. But it's also those who are, are buried in unmarked graves, but buried in, in the sea. If you think about the, the expanse of times, uh, go back to Noah's flood. How many were buried at, at, in the waters? No graves. They're just gone, covered by the water, never to be seen or hear, heard from. If you think all those who uh, traveled and lost their life when ships went down, when different wars, people just in boating, people uh, caught up in floods, and over 6,000 years, that's, that's a whole lot of people. And so we're just going to go with the fact that I believe that he's talking literally about the sea and all those that have been forgotten. And you understand God is talking about the great white throne judgment and he is going to give a body that will stand before him at the great white throne and be judged. But you understand this is a body that won't be uh, burned up in, in the lake of fire. It will endure forever and all of eternity. But let's just talk about the sea and death and hell delivered up the dead if you look at the, all the years and thousands of years in naval battles and the thousands of millions that uh, were lost at sea during that time those in Noah's flood ships that sank drownings hurricanes people washed away but you understand God knows where everyone is all the way back to Cain so we depend upon headstones and, and grave sites and uh, cemeteries by name and uh, those who know where they are, but God knows everything. It doesn't catch him by surprise. And the fact that mankind doesn't know these things, God does. God knows where everyone is all the way back to Cain. And it, whether you are, have lost your life by drowning or by murder or a, a disease, and there's been epidemics and plagues and, uh, throughout mankind, uh, some type of illness, uh, natural causes, it really doesn't matter how, and it really doesn't matter where, bodies and souls are delivered to the great white throne to be judged. Now, this is not the judgment seat of Christ. This is to be judged for all your ungodly works and deeds and for those who have never accepted Jesus as their Savior and had their sins forgiven. Physical bodies, if you look at separated, uh, the spirit and the soul are separated from the bodies at death, are going to be reunited to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I know that I said last week, could you imagine what it would be like to be an atheist, to live your entire life and say there's no God to be kneeled and standing right before the God you said didn't exist? But since we did these deeds in our bodies, since we committed sins in our bodies, and since we uh, <coughs> turned away Jesus when we were in a body of flesh, God is going to give a body to be judged. And you understand that it'll be some type of physical body. I don't know what kind. God does. But I can promise you that according to this, to the Word of God, it'll be a body that feels emotion. It'll be a body that feels pain. A body that'll feel hurt. That'll stand before God to be judged and sentenced to eternal punishment. As I said earlier, reckon what the atheists will think. They were wrong all this. And you want to know an uh, even sadder part about this atheism? What, <coughs> what about all the atheist parents that convinced their children there is no God? It's just fables. It's weak-minded people just looking for something to believe in. It's those that taught it all came from a big bang and aliens and whatnot and uh, came from single cell uh, amoebas or whatever and over millions and billions of years just kind of transformed into this, that, and the other. And uh, one time we lived in the sea, then we lived in trees, then we grew feathers and then uh, all of something and they believed Darwin's theories and taught everything except creation by holy God. 
It's one thing if someone chooses to not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's when they raise their children to not believe. Can you imagine the hurt that a parent will and say that they're and raise their children to never believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? And they're standing before holy God at the great white throne judgment and they realize they've lied to their kids that they've been wrong. And now their kids are going to be sentenced to the lake of fire, those who have reached the age of accountability. And it was them that kept them from God. Do you understand what, what a privilege that it is and what a responsibility as a parent to raise our children in the fear and admonition of God? People used to take it serious coming to church and, and bringing their kids to church and raising their family in church. And it's fewer and fewer people in, in, that we live, in the day that we live in. Where can what the atheists will think? Well, they're going to realize they were wrong. Right in front of them on a great white throne that just expands the heavens is going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. Death and hell are no longer final. Hell gives up their dead. Death gives up the dead. You ever notice that death and hell run hand in hand? They're like twins holding hands. Death takes the body. Hell takes the soul. And so the soul and the body both are given back what it once took, reunited at the great white throne to be judged. So they're no longer in control. You don't have to fear death because death is cast into the lake of fire. Hell's cast into the lake of fire. If you look at three worldwide events, the day the world was made, the world did not even exist, dear friend, until God spoke it into existence. Now you've got a world, you've got a universe, you've got heavens. The day the world was redeemed, the devil thought he had won. At the Garden of Eden, and that all of God's creation made in his likeness, his image now belonged to the devil, but God said, oh no, I told you I was coming back to get him. He paid the sin debt at Calvary. He shed his blood. He gave his life. On the third day, he rose again, defeated death, hell, and the grave. <coughs> you see, that was a worldwide event. It's a whosoever will gospel. I don't believe in Calvinism. I don't believe God picks and chooses who can and can't be saved. It's a whosoever will gospel. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But the third thing is the day that the world would be judged. And now we find in the scriptures the lost are standing before the great white throne. You see, every tool that Satan ever used, every argument, every time that, thing that he used to convince the lost man or woman that God doesn't exist, just live your life how you want to, death is the end. Well, you realize now standing before the great white throne, death ain't the end. Now gone is the serpent. You know the one that at the Garden of Eden brought his message as he, as he lay up in the trees, uh, the, the branches up of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, convinced Eve that if she wanted to be like God and know everything God knew, just eat and disobey God and go ahead and eat the fruit. She did and gave it to Adam and he, be, he ate of it. You see, all that gone. Temptation's gone. Lust of the flesh is gone. Everything's gone. Everything, every tool the devil used to try to keep you from trusting God by faith is gone. This, dear friend, is the second death. Notice in verse number 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Body going to be eternally punished and tormented in the lake of fire not going to burn up but forever forever tormented in the lake of fire the soul eternally tormented in the lake of fire they were put into the sea of fire this is the second death even the sea of fire you see God does away with death 
For long thousands of years, man feared death as being the worst end. No thinking, doesn't even think about the judgment that this soul and spirit lives forever and feels forever. Death is the end. We dread death. For a child of God, for the saved, death means we're released from this body of clay, from this old sinful, wicked world, and God takes us up into heaven where we're way better. But for the lost, it only gets worse. So you see, death is abolished. You ain't got to ever worry about dying again because death is now cast into the lake of fire. Hell's in the lake of fire. So you never have to worry about death again. It'll be a process of dying without dying ever again. It's a place of eternal torment. You ain't got to worry about anything happening. There's no more hospitals to worry about, no more funerals, no more graveyards. It's gone. No more dread, no more worrying about the unknown. You see, there's no such thing as the unknown. The Bible, if you'll just read your Bible and believe it, for the saved, death brings heaven. For the lost, death brings eternal punishment. So there's no such thing as, I don't know about what happens after death. God explains it pretty clear. You see the first death? That's when you separate the soul from the body. The body goes into the grave. The lost soul and spirit goes into hell, but now we see that hell delivers and so does death, that lost soul and body. For the saved and the presence of Almighty God into heaven. You see the body dies, the soul separated is tormented in hell because all these dead that we're talking about now, unsaved. Church ain't here. The church ain't part of this. Church is in heaven. The last enemy, the Bible said, according to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 26, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. God takes death away. You see, we don't have to worry about death in heaven. It's eternal life. Death doesn't go to heaven. Hell doesn't go to heaven. The devil doesn't go to heaven. We will finally be with the Lord Jesus Christ without ever worrying about being sick or dying or a devil or sin or separation ever again we'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ we'll be with our loved ones never to be separated by death never have another sick day never have a terminal illness there may be doctors in heaven but they won't be doctored won't need them the last enemy to be destroyed is death dear friend the wicked will be tormented into the lake of fire, never to be terminated by death. Do you understand? You can pray to die, but you won't die. Death on earth is the end of physical suffering for this body, not the soul. But you see, your body in the lake of fire will suffer, so will your soul. You see, while the saved received glorified bodies that will live forever never suffering when the bible says that we're going to get a body like and unto his when jesus walked out of that grave on that third and appointed day he didn't have that same body that was placed dead in the grave wrapped in grave clothes that body that that he gave to, to die and shed his blood and died on the cross of calvary that's not the body he walked out of the grave with <coughs> When the Bible says we'll be like and unto him, we're going to have a glorified, resurrected body just like the one Jesus has. But you understand, those that are cast in the lake of fire will have some type of an earthly body that won't burn up. They'll suffer, it'll hurt. Thank God for the promise we've got that we'll have a body like Jesus. The body he walked out of there never bled again, never suffered again, never hurt again. You see, the lost will receive bodies that will suffer forever. If you've ever been burnt by a flame, if you've ever been sunburnt really bad, if you've ever been somewhere and you know how bad it hurts, can you just imagine, dear friend, your entire body, every square inch of it, is going to be hurt, is going to be suffering, is going to be and pain like you've never experienced before. 
And he says in verse number 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Do you understand how important that it is to be, have our names written in the Lamb's book of life? Do you understand, dear friend, how important it is to be saved before it's too late? I don't care how many of cults, other religions, other false teaching and false doctrines will tell you that you can live any way you want to, die and never accept Jesus and have another opportunity. That is a lie from the pits of hell, straight from the devil's lips. If you don't get saved before you draw your last breath, you won't get saved ever. Why do you think God gave us the Bible? Why do you think God gave preachers? Why do you think God has a New Testament church? Why do you think he gave us the gospel? Why do we still have the gospel message that's been unchanged for over 2,000 years? God was said we need to be saved while we're still alive, while we still have opportunity. Only the saved get to go to heaven. And is it not amazing is that people don't really give a thought on how beautiful heaven is for the saved and why it's so important to go there. And while it's the, we should desire to go to heaven one day and why people don't understand just how awful hell really is. It's hot. It's a place of suffering. It's a place where you'll go and you never actually die, but you're in the process of dying and hurting and pain and torments, plural. Read Luke 17, gives you a taste of that, gives you a little bit of insight to suffering. But one of the worst things is not only being separated from God, separated from your family that is saved. And remembering every opportunity you had to be saved and turned it away. You'll remember that. Whosoever as in the gospel. Notice that word, whosoever. How is it that God gives us a whosoever gospel? Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's everybody. That is the only promise we have down here in this world, that it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, if you're famous or nobody's ever heard of you. Doesn't matter what your skin color is. Doesn't matter what your gender is. Doesn't matter where you grew up, where you were born, what nationality you are, what country you live. It does not matter. It's the same gospel for every man, woman, and child. All persons aren't saved. If you just look around, you can't tell by just looking at a person if they're saved or lost. God looks into that heart, but he knows each and every one. He knows those when you die immediately, when that soul goes to heaven or hell. But God has a book, and if your name's not in it, lake of fire is where you'll go. Sons and daughters, moms and dads, all persons. Dad, it's your responsibility to tell your children about Jesus and salvation. Dad, it's your responsibility to take your family to church. Dad, it's your responsibility to live godly in front of them. Mom, it's your responsibility too. You see, our children need to be taught about the Lord, need to be raised in the house of God. And you've got sons and daughters who, had, it'll be get, now listen, they'll be good moms and dads that were good moms and dads, that, gave, that, that were good to their kids, that had good homes, good marriages. But if you're not saved, you're going to be standing right there at the, at the great white throne judgment. It's not about how good or how bad. It's not about how much money you made, how you spoiled your kids. It's about whether you saved or whether you're not. You need to get that. And those children who have reached the age of accountability that said, no, thank you, I don't want to be saved. I'll just wait till I'm old. I'm going to live my life and do what I want to do like the prodigal son. You just don't want, you just want to live where nobody tells you what to do. You do what you want to. 
You don't want to be constrained by salvation. Got too many things I want to do that God says in the Bible I can't do. And you see those children who have reached the age of accountability and turned God away, they'll be at the front of the great white throne judgment. All those families will be separated forever. If you thought about the fact is that in the family, those who will be separated by those who were saved and those who were not. I mean, moms and dads that would fight a grizzly bear and the devil himself with nothing but a switch and a squirt gun won't be able to change the fact that some of your family saved and some are not, and you'll be separated You'll remember the Casting Lake of Fire. You're going to remember their family. You'll remember all your friends that tried to get you to go to church and you wouldn't. You'll remember the church that you drove by so many hundreds of times in your lifetime and wouldn't go in. You can remember every sermon that was ever preached and you wouldn't respond. Every preacher that tried to witness to you. You'll remember the Sunday school teacher when you were little. Every opportunity you ever had and said no. But you know what? Those who are in heaven won't even remember you ever existed. All the tears and the sorrow will be wiped away. It will be as if you never even were to those up in heaven. They won't remember knowing you. That's sad. God makes no mistakes. God knows without mistake who's been saved and who hasn't if your name is not written in the lamb's book of life no matter how much you beg god won't pin it down right at the great white throne judgment all the lost will be into the lake of fire because the book and the judge are accurate but you'll be in the lake of fire together which won't give you any consolation you'll be tormented gnashing of teeth there'll be You'll, all you, you won't have any love. You'll just have hate. You'll blame everybody, including yourself. You'll be in the lake of fire together. Just remember who your buddies are going to be. You're going to have the devil himself, the beast, the false prophet. You're going to have the Antichrist, Hitler, people like Charles Manson, murderers, child molesters, thieves, the Hamas, all those who kill in the name of their false god, the most despicable people that never got saved and committed the most heinous crimes, you're going to be down there with them. You see, this judgment really is worse than hell. All those that said that there's many ways to heaven, Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, those that said, you know, there's other gods other than Jesus when the Bible plainly told you there's no other name under heaven except the Lord Jesus. There's no ever other Savior being given to mankind other than Jesus. No one comes to the Father except by me. Jesus said that. The only God that can save your soul and keep you out of heaven is the Lord Jesus Christ. But we live in a world where we're supposed to accept any God that's ever spoken, not just Jesus, because that's too narrow-minded. But may I tell you that the, he is the only God of the Bible. Lost people, those that never been saved, that never believed, never accepted, because the only personal Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible specifically says that. Everybody who never bowed before God here and this before death, here's what you're going to do. You're going to bow your knee. You're going to look into his eyes. You're going to confess Jesus is the only true Lord, only Savior. And he is going to say this to you. Depart from me, I never knew you. It's too late, you can't be saved. You see the God who is love. The God who came in a body of flesh and suffered and died on that cross and paid your sin debt and mine. The God of all love will show you no love at all. Because you see, he's not there as your savior. He's not there as your redeemer. He's not there as your 
mediator between God and man. He's not there to answer your prayers. He's there as your judge. And there's no mercy at the great white throne. So I implore you, you better give some thought to your eternal soul. You've been debating back and forth whether you ought to get up and go to church. I say get up and go to church. Bow your knee while you've got a chance. It's simple. If you believe Jesus died and rose again on that third day, if you believe in your heart and will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, ask him to forgive you of your sins, ask him to come into your heart and save your soul, he'll do it. Give your heart to God, then give your life to him. Serve him while you got the opportunity. My time has come and gone. I appreciate and thank you so much for your kind attention. God bless, and you have a blessed day.